Mangamuka is a small rural settlement of just over 500 people living in the far north of Te Ika Maui. But years and years of flooding have repeatedly destroyed their lifeline, State Highway 1 north to Kaitaia through the Mangamuka Gorge. So why hasn't it been repaired? And what do the delays mean for Fano and locals? D'Angelo Martin investigates. We don't know where to go from here. A hapuri without hope. The needs that our people have up here are huge. Cut off and isolated. It's affected me mentally, physically and financially. Forgotten with no clear path ahead. To them it's a game, to us it's our, it's our lives. I grew up in Kaitaia, and I've driven these roads a thousand times. It's State Highway 1 all the way from Tamaki Makaurau. An essential lifeline for the small communities dotted along the way. I'm about 30 minutes from home. Well, at least I was. This is as far as anyone can go, with no certainty whatsoever on when Mangamuka Gorge Road will reopen again. It's 4am in Mangamuka. Henare Tautari has to start his day early to keep himself alive. Three years ago, he was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Now, Three times a week, he has to travel to Kaitaia Hospital for dialysis. His kidneys have stopped working. It only take like 25 minutes to get across over the gorge. But not anymore. What was once a short trip is now three times as long. It's just a hassle having to go right around. He's got two options. State Highway 10, the official detour route, which can take close to two hours, or an old forestry road, windy, and a route for logging trucks. That is a long way. So, how did we get to this? Back in 2020, a one in 500 year deluge caused the Mangamuka Gorge to be closed for over a year. It looks like Mangamuka Gorge has been hit by an earthquake. What followed was three years of disruption with slip after slip after slip. There was hope. There was hope because it was able to be fixed again. In November last year, the road was cleared and Henare's daughter-in-law, Patience Wurumu, thought life was back to normal. Until January this year. It was just like, oh, here we go again. Like, it's happening again. But this time it was worse. And then now there's just no hope at all. Yeah. And ever since then, the hapori of Mangamuka feel like they've been left in the dark. No one's telling us, like, it's going to be fixed in, like, two months or whatever. It was just... we don't know. It's affected not only those who live in Mangamuka, but also the wider far north community. Morena, whiana. Rika tō kai. <laughs> Close to 200 tauira turn up to Te Kura Kaupapa Māori o Te Rangi A Niwa Niwa every day. Ki te koe ki ko ngā ka, e ko mahi tahi me whaia meri en. I love the work that I do. You know, the children bring me joy in class. <laughs> Nā mihi ane. Mary Ann Bedgegood was living in Horeke, south of Mangamuka, to be close to her elderly parents, travelling to Kura and Kaitaia every day. I'm happy where I am. I'm living in Horeke. My lifestyle there is picture perfect. The closure of the gorge meant that Mary Ann's picture perfect lifestyle was short lived. Just getting to Kura on time became a huge mission. I would travel daily on State Highway 10 to get to school, stuck behind trucks or cars. That would take two and a half hours. That's each way. It was exhausting. 
As a last resort, Mary Ann had to leave Horeke. So from Monday to Friday, I'm staying up here with my son. So it's turned my life upside down. I hardly see my parents. It's affected me mentally, physically and financially. That financial toll has crippled Fano. It's horrible. Just for a trip to town is like $180. That's a full tank of gas for us. And then on our way back, we're having to put more gas in. And they're not getting a break. Our electricians, plumbers, companies like that are not willing to travel this far to do work. It's a big strain. Locals believe several things have led to the loss of the road. Do you think it's actually a tohu te ao Māori nei that perhaps that road is not happy and does not want people to be driving on it anymore? There's been a lot that's gone on. We haven't had a summer with so much rain, which is one of the things that contribute to the slipping. The trees three years ago were cut down from the top of the gorge right down. Years and years and years of root old trees up there. And the other thing is the trucks. You know, there's a lot more logging trucks. There's a lot more trucks that go through there. With all that contributing to our gorge not being happy with what's going on. Because they're the ones that'll be killing it off, like the 50 tunners, the loggers. That's a lot of weight for the road. Despite the extra hassle, Henare is resigned to the diversion. So that's almost eight hours a week on the road. Do you think that's acceptable? I don't look at it like that. I just do it for myself to get my health. How do you manage with that much driving a week? Feel drained, tired, like pretty dangerous of me driving back from dialysis. The hui was unable to access the gorge to see progress, if any, on the slips and despite numerous attempts, no one from Wakakotahi on the ground would answer the questions we had. Just like the people of Mangamuka, we were not a priority. We don't know where to go from here. No one really comes to us, so it's like a, say, a dead town. The roading networks that we have now, they're absolutely shocking. Far North District Mayor Mokotepania has had enough. We need a significant change to how roading infrastructure is funded in this country. The government's priorities and how they fund roading right now, they favour big cities. You'll get the funding if you're looking at public transport. Public transport doesn't exist here in the Far North. And he's got a solution. I want to see the system change to make it easier for us to actually get things done. What we need is our own set-aside funding so that we know that we are guaranteed in rural Aotearoa New Zealand our own pot that addresses the huge needs that we have. The hapori and Mangamuka are left without answers. Have you heard any update whatsoever? No, I haven't. We've just gotten used to it. And they need action. I am at the end of my week. It's all hui and no bloody dui. It's a lifeline for our communities, it's a lifeline for our district. Been my challenge to my central government colleagues is to change the system so that it actually addresses the huge need that we have here in the far north. Until that happens, resilience is keeping them going. I'm here to stay right here. Been here most of my life, over 40 years. Yeah, I'm not looking of moving away from home. I just have to keep on top of the game and keep positive about it. Not something easy to do, but I reckon we can get there. D'Angelo Martin with that pūrongo and a lot of questions in it as a result. So I'll put those questions to Wakakotahi's Far North State Highway Resilience Program Project Director Norman Collier. He can see, as you can see, he's in the studio here. After this quick break, stay with us.
Kua uraki mai anō rā koutou ki tā tātou hui e re reto nuana ngā kōrero. The ongoing issues in Mangamuka Gorge affect not only the lives of those in the town, but also the small communities to the south and the businesses in Kaitaia that they can't easily access. Joining me now in the studio to discuss the Mangamuka Gorge Road is the Far North State Highway Resilience Programme Project Director, Norman Collier. Norm, thanks so much for coming. Appreciate your time. Can I get your reaction to some of the challenges, I guess, that were put in that report of D'Angelo's? Yeah, it is rather challenging. Um, technically, we, we're dealing with a, 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 a huge challenge. These roads were built many, many years ago. And um, in, in, in the timeline when, when those were built, we didn't have the technology that we have now in building roads. Mm. So a lot of the failures we have in the road is actually deep down. Okay. Uh, yeah, so what about the personal impacts, though, oh. on people like Henare, who was in that story? What, what do you say to people like that who have been so significantly impacted personally as a result of the lack of access and the road that they haven't been able to use? I would say that when we fix it this time, we do a good job and we, we take it seriously and we, not that we haven't in the past, but we, we, we do um, put that $100 million that the... Uh, Board has approved to build this road back, repair it, and build it back better, so we don't face this inconvenience in the in the, in the future. I guess the challenge with that, so, so there's there's a, an issue of miscommunication or a lack of communication with the community because they didn't they don't know what's going on. And I know we're going to talk about timelines soon, but what do you say to that? Because they're essentially accusing you of not communicating with them. Yeah, well, we we've um, uh, Hapu has put to us three representatives. Uh, uh, Representative in the north, a representative sort of in the, the northwestern side, representative in the south, and actually made them part of the project. And we've had um, quite significant community feedback sessions in uh, in December and in January this year, and we're having another session come this week. So um, I so can just say that we do communicate. I think right. I'll. And that's, that's part of me being here right now. Yeah, OK, but, but you announced on Friday, one suspects as a result of the story, actually, that there was going to be a timeline, and that timeline is for the road to be open in May with potentially limited yes. access in December. Did you talk to the community before you sent that out? Did they know that timeline and that announcement was coming? I believe so, yes. OK, so if you talk to them then, why is it taking so long between January and May for a decision and a timeline to be announced? We had uh, significant technical challenges. First of all, we had to drill and actually uh, understand exactly geologically what we're dealing with. Now, now, we didn't know where some of these failures were when it happened, so we had to actually mobilise equipment on site, drill, and then do some soil analysis and see what the best method of repair is. Now, the problem is we've got 16 sites where we had to do this. So it's very hard to make a commitment to the community if you actually don't know the answer yourself. The mountain um, absorbed over the last year a significant amount of water and that water is, is seeping through um, quite deep underneath the road. I'm talking in some cases 15 to 20 metres deep. So we had to establish where those points of failures are and we couldn't make a commitment because we actually didn't know the extent of the damage. Um, if you look with the naked eye, um, you'd think you're just fixing what you see but you actually got to go very deep and fix all the way down. OK, so we're in April now. We're approaching what is supposed to be a very cold summer. We've had significant climate impacts on Aotearoa, particularly in the north. So when you say the road is going to be open in May, how sure is sure? Because who knows what's going to happen in winter with rain and the likes and floods and everything else. So how sure are you that May is going to be the timeline when we don't know what's going to happen with winter weather? I'm confident the way we program it that that's achievable. I, um, if, if you're looking for guarantees... Um, it's not something I can give, but what I can give is as many resources as what we can put in that gorge, we will put in that gorge. Did you consider not going back to State Highway 1 through Mangamuka Gorge? Was, was a solution or a potential solution to close that road indefinitely, to close that road permanently? In November, um, end of uh, 2022, um, we did uh, options analysis or, and a wide range of options was looked at. And one of the options were definitely to close the road and not open it again. However, we looked at um, what this road means to the people and what this road means for our network. And we made a decision to, to actually, um, well, the board made a decision to, to put $100 million towards the rebuild and the build back better 
of the Mangamuka Gorge. One of the challenges that came in the story from Fano that D'Angelo spoke to was logging trucks and forestry and the impact of forestry, particularly at the top of the gorge. How do you respond to that and what is the solution to deal with that going forward? So for example, would you consider no logging trucks going through the gorge again? No, we won't consider that because your logging trucks is not actually the root cause of the failure we've experienced in the gorge. Your logging trucks and your heavy vehicles, um, you, you, you're spreading a load of 50 tonnes over 20 metres. But um, if you look at the weight of what a 20 metre deep um, road is on the side of a cliff, a, a logging truck is, if you compare it to a car, is sort of, let's say you've got an elephant and you've got a mouse on the elephant's back or you've got a, a, a dog on the elephant's back. You, you know, that's sort of the, the, the problem here is that that, that actual big, big, big lump of soil on which the road is built, that lump of soil has got a failure 20 metres down and getting washed away with water. So now what we have to do is actually pin all the way through with piles and drill into the... So, so, so your logging trucks damage the surface of the road, but not... 20 metres down. Okay, very quickly, a point made by Mayor Moko Tepania was for a delineation of funding to go to rural roads, and in particular rural access roads. Well, what's your response? Because yes, you'll get the 100 million up front, but what about the ongoing correction, the ongoing work to keep the infrastructure of the roads safe? What's your response to that, and can that happen? We at Waka Kutai have a desire for more and more funding to be put to our um, uh, ongoing maintenance of our network and help us better maintain our roads in the future. But funding conversations is 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 a balance. Do of you support the idea though? Of yes course. or no? Yes, of course. So so it can happen? Well, more funding towards maintenance of roads? I hope it can. Okay, Norman Collier, thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate you coming on the programme.